Okay, thanks team. Hello and welcome everyone. We're going to take a few minutes here to explain some of the features of CyberProtect and the real-world applications of them. First of all, for anyone not intimately familiar with the way Acronis provides backup protection, it comes in the form of a plan. A plan is essentially a package of rules that determines what should be backed up and the times and conditions that apply. CyberProtect builds on that and integrates security and controls in the same process using the same look and feel. So, here, I'm just going to disable the backup plan selection and talk about some of the new and enhanced features. Before I get into them, let me zoom in a little to help illustrate what I'm talking about. So first of all, we can manage the antivirus and anti-malware components. Here you'll find all of the options and settings you'd expect from such a feature. For instance, we can tune how Active Protection deals with threats. If you're not already familiar with Active Protection, it's a feature that monitors for and determines how we deal with malware attacks. Take the scenario where we notice files being encrypted and renamed, possibly as part of a ransomware attack. Do we want to inform someone on the admin team, stop the process from continuing, or automatically roll back the changes using system cache? To guarantee consistency, anti-tamper controls are built in so that malicious software can't stop or suspend the underlying services in an attempt to circumnavigate and perpetuate the attack. There are, of course, configurable options that relate to real-time protection and the configuration of periodic system scans that extend to the protection of removable hardware, very important in this case. URLs can be filtered either based on predefined categories, such as hacking or gambling, or by adding them individually to the list of exclusions. Here, we can add exceptions to the categories in place, or add URLs in isolation to be blocked. Windows components can be managed through the UI as well. Windows Defender and Security Essentials can not only be uh, configured, but also tracked through the CyberProtect console. Having worked in large, fragmented IT departments in the past, I particularly like the vulnerability assessment and the patch management feature. The vulnerability assessment will check each machine where the plan is assigned, ensure the software installed is up to date, and consequently, there are no open doors for malicious software or bad actors. You can choose the scope for assessment and also build conditions into the schedule. For example, ensuring a task is run on startup if it were to miss its original scheduled start for whatever reason. Where there are vulnerabilities found, the patch manager can work to ensure necessary patches are applied and security is maintained. This can be done automatically or as a staged manual process. And we'll see what that looks like in just a second. But also note there is an option to perform a backup prior to applying any patches. The final thing to mention in this section is the data protection map. This is a means to identify any critical file types that may not currently be backed up. The most common use case for this is one that a lot of people are currently experiencing with working from home where data is being saved to a common folder, and that folder alone is the one being backed up, purely for the purpose of efficiency. The data protection map will identify any files that fall outside of that working directory and could therefore impact production if it were lost. And to illustrate what it looks like when the plan has uh, executed, we can start with the software management tab. The patches selection will show all of the available patches and their approval status. Notice as well how we can also deploy patches on an ad hoc basis, particularly useful in the case of high priority issues. Additionally, you'll see some new widgets on the dashboard. They tell the story of security in one neatly packaged central user interface. Like always, the dashboard will centralize all of the pertinent information into one place for immediate, colour-coded reference to all areas of concern. And finally, I wanted to point out the threat feed. This is such a cool feature to help stay protected against a number of different, often unforeseen dangers. Here, we can see some suggestions 
for dealing with potential malware and ransomware attacks, where you can review and act on the recommendations given. So, hopefully that gives an insight into some of the useful components, and with that, I'll hand back over to the conference.